Yo, it's me. Uh, back after uh, last week's um, rage quit. <laughs> so where we are, where we are, where are we? Okay, so I was mixing and I had a deadline of uh, 31st and I, by the time I got to the 30th, I, oh, let me just turn off my floaty ambient stuff here. Just a few seconds. I don't know how loud it is, so I don't want it to interfere. Hang on. There we go. Okay, so, where were we? <laughs> and I'm in focus. Okay. Yeah, I, uh, I had to be finished by the 31st, and a couple of days prior, I started getting into this frame of mind where the deadline, which can often act as a catalyst to finish when you're procrastinating, as I've talked about before, started to take a more um, uh, unproductive turn in that I was starting to resent the, the work. And not only resent it, but it's one thing to write under pressure because there's a certain amount of momentum that comes from from that, that uh, the broad strokes of writing benefit from. But when it comes to mixing, I found myself starting to get more and more stressed. And then by the time like the 30th came, I couldn't hear anything. And it's a very strange thing. You know, you reference other music, or at least I do, while mixing. And while I was listening to even the other things, I was like, I can't hear anything. Not that I couldn't hear it, but it's like my brain wasn't processing what I was hearing in a in a very productive way. So what I opted to do was to deliver rough mixes to label management with a page of 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 excuses as to why it wasn't finished. <laughs> But really, I, I came down to the point where I was like, no one is going to benefit from this not being done properly. And if what it means for it to be properly is for me to take some time off, like a couple of days, and then get back to it with a different frame of mind, then I uh, will certainly take that. And so what I did was, was that I delivered it, saying it's all rough. Now I'm taking a week to do a different thing. And then... Um, and then I start up again on the 6th to mix. And then I have a new deadline, which is the 18th, which I didn't realize how, um, how stretched thin I was becoming. I mean, it's, it's, it's obvious to those around you when you're, when you're, you're too far into a process to see the forest for the trees, but I guess I couldn't um, recognize or wasn't willing to recognize that I was as stressed by it as I was just because I was trying to stick to the deadline. And when I finally got a bit of an extension, the palpable sense of relief was such that I was like, oh my God, you really needed to do this. It's, it's one of these things where the nature of this record, and I've said it before you know, a dozen times, is that of a... Uh, it's simple, it's an appetizer for what I'm about to do. It's, I've been writing this type of music for years and I wanted to sort of encapsulate that and provide something for the audience and for myself prior to the release of The Moth and Axolotl that wasn't so challenging. I just, you know, it was kind of the, the mission statement. Um, and I guess I underestimated how difficult it would be. And I also underestimated how much my internal sense of what is going on in my life is going to come through subconsciously no matter what the vehicle is. So when I started Power Nerd, I was like, ah, oh, let's write a bunch of simple songs and it will be um, not nonsense lyrics, but the lyrics will, it doesn't have to be about anything. And in fact, I was hoping that that would be the case because then I would, I felt like I wouldn't be as emotionally connected to it then I could hand it off to somebody else to mix without feeling the need to police it. But as we've been talking about, every record brings new insights into your world, which in honesty informs the next work that you do, that I do. 
And one of the main ones with this was that the truth is going to come out no matter how you try to disguise it. And no matter how in control you may think you are of your music and your intent, I think so much of it happens under the hood. And the only way to control that is, at least in my experience, is to keep tabs on your, your, yourself mentally. And the past couple of weeks when I was just getting so, my anxiety was high and I was, you know, resenting it and I was angry and, and all these things that come along with it, uh, very much a case of, of, you know, do what you say and not what you do. But it was good for me to, to all of a sudden wake up to the recognition that if what you're trying to do is create something that really um, helps or benefits others in some sense by being able to articulate things through their work that maybe they might not, might not have the vocabulary for, then to release it before it's ready, um, it, what's, who's, who's benefiting from that, you know? Is the audience benefiting from it? Is the label benefiting from it? Am I? And the answer to all those things is no. And so fortunately, and I, I'll say this uh, again and again and again, I think that if there's any indicator that the decisions I've made in the past have led me towards um, a trajectory in my creative life that I think is, is uh, uh, I, that I think of as healthy, it's the awareness that the people that surround me, uh, the, the people in my world, my professional world, I'm surrounded by fantastic people. And uh, when I sort of came to them and said, listen, I, I really feel like as much as I'm trying to do this, I'm rushing it. And it's not, it's not ready yet. I was expecting maybe just for whatever reason, for insecurity or whatever, I was expecting a pushback from that that was much more significant than what we got. We, we do, in order to keep on schedule for the moth and everything else, uh, releasing Power Nerd this year is important. And there's a lead time. So if you're not familiar, um, when records are released, there's a, a grace period of like three months, essentially, prior to the release in which all the setup for that release comes out, whether or not it's a, a promotional cycle or, or videos or uh, interviews or any number of things that go along with it. There's, it's, there's a strategy behind it. And I don't think it's a subversive strategy. It's just if there's that amount of money that's being spent on a project to not get the most uh, mileage out of the the um, the lead up time, it doesn't make sense. So, in order for this to still be released this year, uh, I still had to get it within a certain window. And fortunately, that window is a little more, so I can now get back to it in uh, five days and then finish it. Uh, I think it's really great, and I'm really happy with it. And I, I'm now working on the moth for this week. And it's, uh, it, it underlines why Power Nerd was so uh, important for me. Because everything else is so complex. And everything else is emotionally very abstract. And Power Nerd isn't. It is, it is essentially a um, reflection of the frame of mind that has been uh, based on setting all these things up. And, and as such, going back to what I was saying a second ago, you can't control what the output's going to be. You can, the, in my mind, I feel like I could have been writing nursery rhymes about, you know, uh, anything. You can pick, you know, a kitty cat and a doggy or whatever. And then I think your subconscious is just going to take that kitty cat and that doggy and that nursery rhyme and it's going to adhere whatever emotional baggage or interests are currently going on in your life and that will just become an analogy for it. And uh, it makes me realize that you're in control of certain parts of your creative function, but much of it you're just not. And you're, you're best spent, in my opinion, to not worry about that part of it too much and just try to do your best with whatever, whatever sonic, um, uh, I keep going back to the word aesthetic, whatever 
sonic aesthetic seems to be intriguing at that moment. Rest assured, whatever you're going through is going to come out through it. So that's where I'm at. So I've got five days here, kind of work on the moth, and, and you know, people say, oh, you should just take a break. But in a sense, working, I just love music. I love my job. So working on something else is a, is a joy. And so I'll do that. And then next interview or next update, I will be... Um, <laughs> I'll be back on the the train and I, I hope I'm uh, in a frame of mind that is is uh, more calm than it has been for the past couple of weeks. Thanks for everything. Thanks for the support. And uh, thanks to everybody in my professional world for for understanding the process more than I do, clearly. Hope you're well. See you soon.